as an Anglican priest, we always preach from the lectionary. The Anglican Church is uh, biblical. We base our faith, our doctrines and teachings from the Bible. The second thing is that Anglicans are liturgical. That means we believe in ordered public worship. And we believe in seasons. The seasons of the Anglican Church follows a calendar from Advent and it ends in ordinary times like the one that we are in. Therefore, all Anglican priests are supposed to preach from the readings that are there and prescribed in the liturgy. In the course of the last two weeks, I always preach from the liturgy, from the lectionary readings. That is what I've taught my students. As a teacher of Anglicanism, I have always emphasized preaching from the lectionary. When you preach from the lectionary, you avoid taking your own feelings and your own issues to the pulpit. Number two, when you preach from the lectionary, you become more objective. You let the Bible lead you. And when you preach from the lectionary innovatively, you will always have the message. And you will systematically cover the entire Bible. In the past few weeks, we have been looking at the story of three very, very important people in the Bible. It's all our first readings have been drawn from the book of First Samuel. Just as I have always said that the book of First Samuel, we do not know who wrote it, but it's one of the one of the one of the sons of the prophets or one of the students in a, a prophetic um, theological training institution per se. He wrote it based on the annals or the records of Prophet Samuel, Prophet Gad, and Prophet Nathan. Now. We have looked at three people. Number one, we have looked at the life of Jonathan. Number two, we have looked at the life of Saul. And number three, we have taken time to look at, at uh, David. And I want to share with you today, what do you do when someone's star seems to be rising? David's star was rising. He was the heir apparent. He was the next king. He defeated Goliath. He had killed tens of thousands. And even Saul had killed a thousand. The star of David was on the rise. In life, there are people that we stay with. And it seems their stars is always rising. Ours is always on the same place. Or, sometimes not in the same place, the star might be diminishing. But the star of David was on the rise. What do you do with someone who appears to be getting more money, more wealth, more fame? Even in ministry, what do you do with a person who just was ordained the other day, he becomes a rural dean, some transition to become an archdeacon, why do you remain the same place, the vicar in charge? And some even get to be bishops. Yet our star does not seem to be rising. And today I want to talk about that topic. What do you do about someone who is rising and yet as a Christian you are remaining in the other place? There are two responses to the people whose stars are rising. Number one, you can decide to be like Saul. Saul wanted to fight David. He wanted to destroy his career. He wanted to destroy his progress. Little did he know that it was God who commissioned and it is God who established his success. He ended up fighting against God which was not a very, very pleasant sight. He was completely destroyed and devastated. 
Allow me to say, sometimes you may think you are fighting someone, but you are fighting the plan of God. Just like the people who fought Jesus, and they wanted to destroy him by crucifying him, he was threatening their, their stronghold on religion. The chief priests and the priests and the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they crucified him. Little did they know that God is sovereign. Even in our bad plans as human beings, God can turn them towards his goal. And it is through the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, his betrayal, that God turned things around and he gave us salvation and hope. And now turn to the other character by the name of Jonathan. What did Jonathan do when David's star was ascending? Jonathan knew that he was the heir apparent to the kingdom. He was the crown prince. He had all the reasons to, to be against David. But he was a worshiper of God. And he saw God's plan in David. And Jordan, uh, Jonathan loved David. And in fact, he made a covenant with David. Some people, even as they are sent, and we know they are sent by God, it is good to embrace them. It is good even to make a covenant, a truce with them. And he said uh, that all our descendants will be taken care of by the other ones. And you remember David kept his backing and he helped the descendant of Jonathan. The other thing is that when David was troubled, he helped David find strength in God. The people whose stars are rising, we should help them to grow. And I want to tell you, God has a plan for everybody. Do not imitate anybody. Do not seek to be anybody. But rather, may the Lord enable you to know that it is God's plan that matters. Number two, go, as God is blessing the other person, do not be jealous. Know that God has a plan for your life. And lastly, we should trust in God. Fight no one, but fight them. Always be in line with the plan of God. Tomorrow, we end up this series as we look at the demise of Saul. Saul died a very miserable man. He wanted to seek help, but not from God. But you cannot run from God. Finally, he was given the last prophecy that he will die in frustration with his entire descendants for he sought to, fought a person, to fight a person rather than to live of the promises of God. It is my prayer that you will not be like a soul. You will always be like Jonathan. Love everybody. Know that you have your place. Make truce with everybody. Live with peace with everybody. Even the people who have bad intentions with you. Lastly, Help everyone to find strength in God. May the Lord richly bless you. Remember, preach from the lectionary. Even tomorrow, I'll be preaching from 1 Samuel 23, uh, chapter 23, verse 3 to 25 at Emmanuel Nasokol. May the Lord bless you. Let's meet as we look at God's word. May the Lord bless you. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.